Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Jenny. I'm from Jenny Card Designs. Thanks so much for joining me today. My YouTube channel contains content that is intended to share paper crafting tutorials and inspiration with all of you. I hope that you enjoy. Okay, today I'm going to be sharing with you two more ways to use 12 by 12 pattern paper packs. So I've got this beautiful splash of color rainbow pattern paper pack that has been sitting on my shelf since the day I bought it. I just love these patterns and I was so afraid to cut them up. I didn't want to wreck them. I just, I love the way they look. It sounds a little crazy, but if you've watched any of my videos, then you'll know I often refer to myself as a crazy person. I'm just flipping through this here and I decided that this was my least favorite pattern to create this technique for today. All right, so I'm gonna pull one of these sheets of pattern paper out of this 12 by 12 book, and I'm going to pull in my trimmer and I'm going to chop this down to make sure it's exactly 12 inches. I'm just trimming off that little top piece of the paper and I'm gonna make sure everything is nice and even and I cut it all straight. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start cutting at two inch increments. So my first cut is going to be down to 10 inches. So I'll make sure everything's nice and straight and I'll cut my first strip at 10 inches and then I will cut my second strip at eight inches. And then my next one I'm going to cut at six inches and then I'm gonna cut at four inches and then lastly down to two inches. After that's done, we're going to pull in the scoreboard and we're gonna take these strips, we're going to put them in the scoreboard and across the 12 inch side of these strips, we're gonna score at six inches. So we're just scoring them in half and I'll use my bone folder to crease the folds. And sometimes I notice that I didn't get the most perfect straight cut, but we'll come back and fix that in just a minute. So I'll go ahead and I'll score all of these little strips of paper and we'll end up with six pieces that measure two by six folded in half. Okay, so I'm going to take my trimmer and take a look at some of those edges that aren't quite perfectly straight and I'll just trim off the little sides so that you can't really tell so that we've got pattern on both sides of this little piece of paper. And I'll do that to all of them, making sure that they're all nice and straight and lined up evenly. So don't worry about if you don't get the straightest perfect cut. I didn't do so good, I had all these strips. That's okay, they're all straight and even now. So I'm going to go ahead and start adhering these together. So I'm just going to open them up and apply some adhesive. You can use tape runner or liquid glue for this, whatever works best for you. And I'm just gonna apply some adhesive to close these little strips up. And I'll do that to all six of my little sheets of cardstock. So once those are all done, I'm going to use my bone folder, press in the adhesive, crease all my score marks to make sure everything is nice and straight and adhered together. I just want to make sure that all of the folded score marks are kind of stacked up together in this same orientation. So I want to make sure everything's laid the same way. Now I have this punch that has a stub and a scallop, and I have this punch that is a half inch corner rounder and a quarter inch corner rounder. And I also have a crocodile to punch holes and apply some eyelets. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to chomp all of the corners off on these little strips of cardstock. And I'm just gonna try a few different things. I'm gonna try some rounded corners, I'll try some big ones, I'll try some small ones, just to get a variation of different patterns to see what I like best. For the first one, I use the quarter inch corner rounder. For the second one, I use the half inch corner rounder, and you can see the difference between the two. Next, we're going to use the scallop punch. And that's kind of cute, I like the way that looks, and it almost gives you like a tag sort of topper look. Okay, then we're gonna flip around and punch the stub. This is like the ticket stub. Mm, that looks kind of cool. This is a great little tool to have for junk journaling. If you ever are interested in that, that's a fun little tool to make. So I've decided that I like the look of the quarter inch punch on the bottom and the scallop punch on the top. I like mixing the two up. I like the look of that the best. 
So what I'm making here are little bookmarks. Okay, so once this is all done, I'm gonna finish the last one. I'm gonna use that scallop punch and the quarter inch corner rounder. All right, these are all done. Now that these corners are all punched, we're going to move on to the next step. So I'm gonna take my crocodile and I'm going to punch a hole. I'm going to line this up and punch. And then I'm going to take my eyelet, I'm gonna set it into my hole and then use the crocodile and close up that eyelet. I really like this. I think it gives a nice professional finishing touch to your projects, whether it's tags or cards or whatever it is that you're making. I really like the looks of these eyelets. Okay, so next I'm going to add a little bit of baker's twine. I've got some black and white baker's twine here. I'm just gonna cut a piece off, fold it in half, and stick it through my eyelet and then make a little knot here, and that's it. Here is a super cute little bookmark. So you can use these for yourself, you can use them for gifts, you can, if you have a business, you could put your business information on these little bookmarks. There's so many different uses for this, and it's just a fun way to create in your craft space using some of that 12 by 12 pattern paper that we all tend to hoard. I know that I have more pattern paper packs than I can count, and this is a nice fun way to get crafty in your space. Okay, so uh, one last thing that you can do to these bookmarks, other than just cutting up the cardstock, you can embellish them. I have a drawer that is full of bits and pieces, and that's what I call it, bits and pieces. So whenever I make cards, I always stamp a few extras in different colors so that I have more options and then I if I don't use them I throw them in my drawer and save them for a project later on and here's a project later on so I grab some of my bits and pieces and adhere them down to my little bookmarks and we have a cute little nifty little gift all right let's move into the second way that we're gonna cut these pattern papers okay for my next idea I wanted to create some dividers for my Avery L stamp and die pockets. Now I have these small, medium, and large stamp pockets. Uh, this will work for any stamp pocket or any stamp organization method that you have. So I'm just going to flip through this paper pack and pick out some designs that I like, and we're gonna start chopping them up. So I picked out three patterns, one for my large, one for my medium, and one for my small. So basically what you wanna do is take the piece of cardstock and cut it in half. That's our starting point. For these dividers, I decided to choose pattern papers that I know that I probably wouldn't use for cards. So I, I used some of those big large 12 by 12 sort of scrapbook layout designs and I'm just cutting them down. So basically what I'm doing is I'm gonna cut my piece of cardstock in half at six inches and then sort of cut it down to just be three quarters of an inch taller than my stamp pocket. And I'm gonna create a little tab in the top of my cardstock. And I do this by lining up my cardstock two and three quarters of an inch past the cut line. And I'm putting these two pieces of paper together and I'm cutting them at the same time. So once my cardstock is lined up, I'm going to bring my cut blade to the top close my little guide and I'm going to slowly cut my cardstock down and I only want to bring that blade down to three quarters of an inch and then I'm going to stop. If that makes sense, I'm just cutting a little notch in this cardstock. And now I'm gonna flip my cardstock around and bring my blade up through the bottom and cut just to that little first cut line. So we're just cutting off a little rectangle and it'll leave us with a little tab where we can label our dividers. And just to create a finishing touch, I'm going to use my corner rounder and round the corners. So I do that for all four corners, and then I also wanted to round the corner on the inside of this little tab for my divider. So how I do that is just close off one of the sides of my corner rounder and then I'm able to maneuver it in there and cut that off. And then we've got two dividers out of one sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock. And I didn't really like the way that one turned out. I cut it a little bit too short. I wanted my stamp pocket to be completely covered. So I went ahead and I recut these and I also put tabs on the left and on the right of my dividers. 
so then it would be easier for me to see visually in my storage bin. Okay, so this is as tall as my stamp pocket with three quarters of an inch of a tab over top. And I can use my label maker to label these little tabs. So I go ahead and I made the same dividers for my medium stamp pockets, creating them just three quarters of an inch larger as well. And then I get two dividers for the medium stamp pocket with a little bit of cardstock left over that I can use for cards or scraps or whatever. And for the small stamp pocket, I get four dividers out of one sheet of cardstock. And I did the same thing by flipping my divider tabs on the top from left to right so that I have a nice visual in my little storage bin. So here's a quick look at what I, we've cut up so far. So the small stamp pocket divider ends up being five and three quarters by five and three quarters. And the medium stamp pocket dividers ends up being eight and a quarter by five and three quarters. And the large stamp pocket divider ends up being six inches by 10 and a half inches. So another idea I had, you get less, but you get more of a sturdy divider. So what I've done is I've taken the pattern paper and I score it in half and then adhere it together. So then we have, instead of two stamp pocket dividers out of a 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock, we get one, but it's a little bit more substantial. And the pattern ends up on both sides. So that makes them reversible. So here's a look at all of the stamp pockets that I created today. And like I said, this will work for any of the stamp pockets that you may have, or just even your stamps. You don't necessarily have to have them in stamp pockets. You can leave them in the original packaging that they come in and you can still put in dividers to separate them. So that's another way to use up the, the 12 by 12 card stocks that are in your stash and to organize and get crafty in your space. So I hope this has been helpful. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend it here with me. Coming up on screen are a couple of videos I think you may enjoy, including the playlist for my Chop It Up series. I have many different videos that share multiple different ways to cut up these 12 by 12 paper packs and get to using your crafty stash. Thanks for joining me today. Have yourself a lovely day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.